Honourable Pretenbach. Thank you, Honourable Chair. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the Minister of Justice because I see that he's uh, becoming uncomfortable sitting there for the whole day and I'm scared he falls asleep. So I'm going to uh, make an effort to wake him up a little. So, uh, Minister, you're the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services. It's a big job, very big portfolio. It doesn't matter that you have two deputies, each one helping on a different thing. You're responsible, overarchingly, for justice and correctional services in this country. Do you agree? Yeah. And it's your job, Minister, to ensure the safety of South African citizens. It's your job in, as the... A Minister of Justice and Correctional Services in conjunction with the rest of the criminal justice cluster to ensure the safety of South African citizens. Make sure that they're safe in their homes every night. Is that correct? Yeah. And then I presume that you'll agree with me that in this particular instance you have failed. Yes, that's why we apologize to the nation. Good. Um, because we, we don't, uh, we take responsibility in terms of the act, the overall responsibility as the custodian of um, prisons in this country is the Department of Correctional Services. Mm. Yes. Well, to your credit then, you uh, take responsibility and it's admirable quality. But you're a lawyer yourself. You're, you, you've been a practicing attorney. You understand about culpability and you understand about culpability of the state. And you understand about your failure to protect both the public at large and more importantly the victims of this particular offender. And when you knew, let's say at the best for you, when you knew in October of 2022 that Bester had escaped or that it was very likely that he'd escaped, what steps did you take, you, to ensure that the victims of, of uh, Bester were informed, adequately supported, adequately protected? What steps did you take? Yeah, Honourable Bredenbach, as I've said, um, after the telephone call with the, with the inspecting judge, I immediately called the National Commissioner to, eh? yeah, yeah, because I was shocked to the core, and I did mention it to, to the judge that uh, this is uh, something, yeah, something else, but yeah, I will definitely engage the National Commissioner, which I did, to prioritize this matter and to deal with the issues of the investigations as urgently as possible. And that's where he told me that already there is an investigation that is ongoing, which I asked why I was not aware of this thing. He says, no, it's because they did not have enough information to bring. They were still at the preliminary stages of the investigation, the, the investigators. So, Minister, forgive me, but that's just not good enough. You phone up the commissioner, he tells you that there is an investigation. They haven't bothered to inform you. Uh, because they don't have enough information. The information that they have is that there was a dead body in a cell in Bloemfontein that doesn't belong to Tabo Bester. And Tabo Bester is no longer in that prison. He's a serial rapist, he's a murderer, he's convicted. He has victims out there. My question to you was, what steps did you take, you, to inform his victims, to protect his victims, to support his victims? Yeah, Honorable Bradenbach, it's not correct. In terms of the timelines, at the time when I spoke to the National Commission, he told me that the investigation is still at the preliminary stage. And the preliminary stage, when I asked, what do you mean, what is it that you have? I mean, he said, no, we still need to get the various reports that relates to confirming whether indeed this guy has escaped. Because one, um, G4S is still insisting that 
the body that died there is the one of, or that they found, <laughs> is the one of, uh, <laughs> of <laughs> yeah, the person who died there is, the, is this Mr. Tabopest. So at that, that at the time, that is what was happening. And secondly, as you will be aware, Honorable uh, Bradenberg, it then becomes the responsibility of the corrections unit in the departments to inform uh, the victims and deal with them because, I mean, it's all over the country. And I did uh, engage the National Commissioner. I think the National Commissioner can take it from there because I, my responsibility deals with oversight and also to check whether what should be done is indeed done. I differ from you, Minister. I think your responsibility uh, entails everything. It's a big job. You've accepted that responsibility. And you can't pass the buck, which is what you're trying to it do. It is not in terms of the Correctional Services Act. Uh, I'm, not the the I'm not talking the, about the I'm not talking about the Act. The, the, the responsibility, and Sorry, you will Minister. always... Uh, Sorry, Minister. Uh. I think let's give each other space. Uh, to, we, we can't uh, talk oh, past each other. My apology. I'm not talking about the Act, uh, Minister, and you know it. I'm talking about your responsibility as a lawyer, as a human being, as a Minister of Justice. Don't tell me that that is circumscribed by the Act. That, that's, a, that's a poor show, it's an indictment on you. And I honestly thought you were better than that. You have a deputy sitting next to you. Did you phone him up and say, this thing has happened? Do you know about it? What are you doing about it? And will you please sort out the victims, some sort of initiative to protect them, to support them? Did you do that? Honorable Bredenbach, you are the proponent of saying we need to give professionals the independence to do their job. While we follow up, while we look at them, while they give us reports, but you cannot also be the one who also becomes the National Commissioner, the Accounting Authority and the Accounting Officer. When I got this thing, the first call I made was to the National uh, Commissioner, for example. And at that time, I did not even inform my staff, for example, um, that I had this discussion with the inspecting judge, and this is his view, uh, that there could be this thing. Because I thought that this is very sensitive. I must limit it as far as possible. And the National Commissioner, when he has got preliminary information and reports, he will be able to inform the Deputy Minister. So, Minister, I would ask you to keep your answers a little shorter than that because you're taking up my 15 minutes. Uh, all I can say to you is that, in my view, you fell short of the mark. My other questions are to uh, DCS. Uh, I can just say to you, Minister, that being shocked seems to sort of run in... Your, the cabinet circles, the president's always shocked that we don't have electricity. You shocked. You were shocked that the Guptas weren't extradited. Shock seems to be a, a thing. Uh, maybe consult someone about that. I suspect you're also shocked, Honorable President. You know, unfortunately, this, uh, unfortunately, shocked I'm not. Everyone. No, unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, members, please, please. Uh, my next question is to DCS. Um, when you were informed of this occurrence at uh, Mangahung, uh, at what time did the first DCS person arrive at that scene? Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I'm going to ask one of the investigators to answer that question. Thank you, <coughs> Honorable Chairperson. Um, the incident happened around uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, and uh, according to the Chief OS officials, they immediately phoned the, uh, the controller, and because controller is not far from uh, Mangau, it took them at, uh, around 15 minutes, and they were already there. It was around uh, half past four in the morning.
first DCS person arrived there at 4.30 in the morning. Who was that person? It was uh, the controller and the deputy controller. And they're not here today? Yes, they are not here, uh, honorable member. Okay. And did they give you a report of what they found there? What was the state of the cell? They did uh, give the, the statements to the investigators. What was the state of the cell? The investigator uh, will proceed to give the details. Okay, but please, a concise answer. Predenbach, we are left with four minutes. I, I will credit you with one minute, for the, then I left with five minutes. Thank you. What was the state of the cell? But please be concise. Thank you, Honorable Chair. When they arrived at the scene, they, they found a lot of smoke in that, in that cell and they found a body lying down in that cell, facing down. That's what they told us, uh, Honorable. Did they take photographs? No, they did, did not. Did anyone take photographs? Only SAPS forensic did take the photographs. When did they take those photographs? On the day of the incident. When on the day of the incident? Early morning, late afternoon, middle of the night? Uh, around s past six, six o'clock when they arrived at the scene. In the morning? In the morning of the incident. And those photographs should be available? That's correct. Have you seen them? We have seen them uh, last 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 week on our what was the state of the cell was it damaged was the extensive fire damage in the cell at the time if i recall well uh, the cell was like repaired cleaned thank you is it uh, a commissioner I just wanted to assist. Uh, I think the investigator is answering a question about the state of the cell that he was exposed to last week. He's not answering the question on what was the state of the cell when the body was still there in the morning of the uh, yeah in the morning of the incident, which is the third of May, 2022. And uh, yeah, he's indicating that he o he only got access to the photos last week, and that is as a result of the takeover we did. This is the information that we could not get access to when they were doing the investigation. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh...